Hello everybody, jankers, jankheads, welcome to our brand new series on Birthdays at the Beginning. That is this wonderful game that we are playing here today. My audio is a little bit loud, but this game is an evolution simulator. It's not quite like Spore, just in the sense that it, uh, oh that's better. Probably turn this down a little bit too in the sense that you are playing as the creature you're evolving but it's more of a sandbox evolution type game we have this cube here in front of us which is right now it's all land but we can you can see there's a water level right below there and we using this little avatar here are going to shape this world to our liking and then by well by doing this we can zoom down to the overworld and we can zoom in and out. The controls on this game are super, super weird. So it might take me a little while to get used to. Um, I do have a decent amount of time in this game though, so I do know how it works. Also to be clear, we are doing free mode, not the campaign because the campaign in this game is just, I mean, it's just worthless. Um, and we have a full, uh, this is a character that I've already created. So we have a lot of items that we can use and a whole set of HP and range of, or just a range of things that we can use at our disposal to shape this world uh, quickly and easily. I figured it would be the best way to go about this. So um, I'll explain more how the rest of it works soon. But let's start off with some of the basics here. You can see in the top right, it is currently 54 degrees. That is kind of just the, the neutral baseline it starts you off on uh, for this new world that I've uh, spawned in. But it's going down to 24 degrees. Now, temperature is controlled by the elevation. So let's here, let's go right over to, I'm going to zoom over to here. And then I'm going to use one of my two buttons here to, oh, that's the wrong one. But you can see it went down a degree because I raised it up. But if I push it down, it's going to go up in a degree. And that you can see that the number on the right is changing at 26 degrees is changing, not the 54. So if I push it down again and again, then it's going to keep going up. So the lower we make the elevation, the... Uh, the higher the overall temperature will be. So we're gonna push this down to start. You can also see over there in that, uh, on the other side of the cube from us, that there is a little sparkly guy. We're gonna go grab him in a second. We have, like I said, a lot of items already at our disposal, but we will want to grab that. Let me run over here. And you can see down at the bottom, we got a field source field source obtained. So there are various items that are going to help us shape everything. There's another field source. Um, and now, okay, so we're going to want that temperature on the right, the, it's now 38, it's rising pretty quick. Um, I can also control the, the area that I affect very greatly. You can see I'm scrolling through here. I can make many different size structures and things. But for now, before we have any actual creatures in our world, we are going to continue to, let's see, let's just continue to decrease this all. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit more. See, uh, the, part of the reason why I wanted to start off with a, oh wait, I screwed that up, didn't I? I did, okay, that's fine, we can, oh. You can also see, as I'm doing this, um, every time I make a move, it decreases my HP in the bottom left, which we have to regenerate up in the macro mode, but I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But there we go. So each single square is one HP, and it, it's great that I have a shitload of HP, because when you start off this game in the campaign, it gives you essentially no HP, and you can also only do this this is all the area you can affect so it just takes forever and it's just it's just not worth it especially because i have such a good one going already but i'm gonna press i here we're gonna go up to macro mode so this is the world we've created um i created some shallows there are three different levels of shallows which is just one square below the ground level two squares and three squares or cubes i guess i should say 
but okay so what we're gonna do now you can watch the air temperature it's not it's gonna decrease a little bit but we got it up to 52 on that red number when we were down there so it's not gonna decrease that much you can see our land and water percentage this by the way is a small cube we can increase the cube size while keeping all the work we've done in the middle um, and eventually we will be doing that just to make a really large uh, a large world to deal with but okay so in this mode there's two things we can do we can press X to start time you can see that increases the cube here um, we're at cube year 4,000 now it also increases my HP so that's how we get HP back we also got a new organism phytoplankton we can't actually see that down there because this is you know a microscopic organism but then the other thing we can do is press C to fast forward time. This makes the cube year go up way faster. It makes the organisms propagate way faster as well. Um, and it also makes our HP go down very slightly. Boom. There we go. Our second organism, zooplankton. So these are things that are spawning in the water because just because there's water and the temperature is right for these microorganisms. But again, that is not anything we can see. So we're going to keep fast forwarding here. About to hit the year 100,000. But as soon as we get something that's big enough for us to actually see with our own eyes, we will... There we go. Okay, so we're going to stop there and then pause time. You can already see down there, you can see these little green blobs. These are our stromatolites. And we can zoom on down and see our little guys right here. Um, now, let me... Is there a way that we can see the information? I don't believe... So we can't we can in general, but not that easily. So you can see we have seems like a couple little stromatolites in there. There's one right here. Stromatolites, by the way, are for those of you that don't know, are ancient organisms that are big collections of single cell organisms that kind of operate as one. They're kind of like a sea sponge, except like the uh, proto version. You can also see these technically count as plants, even though I don't think that's entirely correct but either way uh you can see they show up on the map when we're down here on the mini map so those are our three organisms now let's quickly go into game info and we can go to our library go to our tree you can see i have a lot of the organisms already unlocked i don't want to spoil too much uh i have most of them unlocked actually but you can see our very first organism here this stromatolite an algae native to very hot shallows utilizes photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Oh, I guess maybe they are plants. Hmm. They emerge when the broth of life is used on the primordial zooplankton filled sea. Yeah, so that's all stuff that is technically already done in this world, but shallows, you can see the height that they spawn at. You can see their birth temp and their adaption temp. So this is how long they'll survive. If we go below negative two degrees or above 68 degrees, then they'll start to go extinct. Um, we have a decent population. You can see a bunch of different stats and stuff here. That stuff don't matter too much. But, okay. So, we're going to zoom back up. We do have a pretty hot world still. And that temperature, the air temp, will vary slightly. Oh, voila. We already have another organism. Let's see. And this is our first free-moving organism. You can see it's a red dot rather than the green. Um, so, let me zoom in. And then I will do this. There we go. A Cyclomedusa. This is an ancient jellyfish. You can see him floating around down there. Adorable little guy. They have a pretty small population to start off with. They did just evolve. So, you know, that's to be expected. But there we go. All right. Organism number two complete. Let's zoom back out and keep it moving. We'll see what we get next. Colunia. Okay, great. I'm not, I won't necessarily go down for every organism that we see, but just for these early ones so that you guys can see. So this right here is a little bit of a seaweed uh, kelp type of guy. So this is our first true plant. And he spawns right next to the, to the land there, which does signify that we may be able to get a little bit on land sometime soon. But we have some time to go before then. So let's keep fast forwarding. We'll see what we get next. You can see all of our populations fluctuating. Elrathia, excellent. Okay. This is our first um, arthropod. Well, I guess jellyfish, is, jellyfish are arthropods as well, aren't they? But we can let's zoom in here. 
You can see him swimming around down here. It would be a little hard to see, but there he is, that little trilobite-looking guy. I think they are basically trilobites. Uh, Elrathia, there we go. So our first uh, hard shell organism. Oh, there we go. There he is, little guy swimming around through our stromatolites. You can also see there's some green starting to form on the seabed here. That is excellent. We definitely want that green to be starting to spread. We are pretty warm, so we're going to have to see if that's how warm we're going to want to stay. But for now, we are going to continue. Let's see what we can get next. We'll wait a little while. Let our organisms fluctuate. Ah, Pykea. Or Pykea? Might just be Pykea. Uh, let's go check him out. We do have a couple items in here we can grab. You can see we got a seed of mutation there and a small recovery leaf. Uh, okay, so here we go. We have zoom in on these guys. Our first tailed organisms. Oh, there they are. Our sea is starting to be full of life. It's starting. The Pykea and then our uh, Cyclomedusa over here. The Elrathia are still alive. I think they're in the... Yeah, there they are. They're in the uh, more shallow areas, but... All right, there we go. Another organism. Let's keep it moving. What's next? What's next? Wow, a lot of Pykea. They are loving this area. Um, it, organisms can also interact with each other. Some organisms won't spawn without other ones present. And sometimes if one organism gets too prevalent, they can hunt another one to extinction, that sort of stuff. Dinorthus. Okay, great. I believe this is a sea star. Let's zoom, grab that, and then let's see. Where is our little guy? Hard to, it can be hard to tell where specific things are, but I think if we swim around a little bit here, you can see all of the Pykea. There is a ton of them. They are loving this hot sea. Oh, it's a, uh, okay. It is actually a clam, it seems. Or a, uh, you know, a mussel type thing of some kind. A mollusk. I think this is our first mollusk. Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, well, very cool. There, There is that. Uh, let me... Zoom back out. We don't have a ton of them yet, but I'm sure they will start to propagate. Okay, let's get it going. Back on the speedy rack. And we'll see what we get next. Before too long, we should start to see at least a little green spreading onto land, but we may need to do a little bit of alteration before that happens. I think we'll do a little bit more building. Because you do need... Ugh, excuse me. You do need fresh water sources, which we are going to have to put in ourselves because all that water you're seeing is all salt water. Um, but we can put in our own fresh water source, which may be required to have things on land. Wow, Elrathia is doing great. That's good to see. It does seem like we may have stagnated a bit. Okay, let's give a quick look in our library. And let's see, what do we have? So we have Stromatolites, we have Colunia, we haven't gotten any other plants yet. So we have Cyclomedusa, and then we have Elrathia, there's that. Haven't gotten any more down there in the arthropod section. But we have gotten uh, Pykea. Then let's see, where is... Oh, interesting. It seems like we skipped Fakoff somehow in order to get Dinorthus. A brachiopod that lives with Calunia and Elrathia in very hot shallows. Okay, I mean, makes sense. But, okay. We'll have to see. I'm not going to try to go too specifically for anything because, you know, we have the whole library unlocked. But I think we're just going to try to manipulate the world to how we like. And we'll kind of just see what we can get naturally. I think that is kind of the most interesting part of this game. Okay, it does seem like we're not getting anything new, so I think it's going to be time to... Okay, it's time to do a little bit more alteration. Uh, let me zoom out. I think we might be a bit warm to be getting new things. We have a lot of items. You can see that items just come like crazy. You can collect all those. If you want to see what items we got, they're going to be going across the bottom of the screen. But for now, okay, let's see. I think what I want to do is I'm gonna raise this side up a bit 
And then let's grab, we're gonna go into our item selection down here at the bottom. God, the controls are so insane. Okay, here we go. Now, um, ooh, do we have a favorite selected? Okay, we're gonna have to, we have a little favorite menu. That's what I'm moving right now in that bottom left. Um, so I'm gonna put you here, a mountain source. Oh, mountain range source is also going to be useful. Um, I'm gonna put you here. And then we'll put a river source here. And let's see, do we have any valley sources? These are all just a bunch of decorations that they also give us. Do we have any valley sources? I don't see any. Huh, I guess maybe I used them up. That's okay, we don't necessarily need them. Uh, we can dig ourselves just as easily, really. But, okay, so let's close the item menu and then let's grab a mountain source and we're gonna use that right here. There you go, so that's what using a mountain source does. It kinda just makes that natural thing uh, come up, which is pretty great. And then we're going to, let's see what we want. We're gonna grab this and we're gonna raise this up a tad. I'm gonna raise this up. Mm, we'll go two, yeah, let's do that. Then we're gonna do this and then we're gonna go over here and do, mm, yeah, we'll do the same thing thing generally but you know what this one um okay this one we're actually going to raise up a little bit uh let's go one more on that get it all the way up here this will all make sense as to why i'm i'm doing all of this in a moment but we're going to leave this one the way it is but we're going to expand it out it. This is going to decrease our overall world temperature. You can see it going down in the top left. Um, and then let's get this little guy out. And we're going to put it like this. Let's expand this out a little further. Um, I'm going to make this go all the way over here. And then we're going to get out our little one boy. We're going to rise this up. We're just gonna make this match over with that. I do generally like to make stuff pretty symmetrical in, in this game and games like this. Um, eventually though, I'm sure once we're on a really macro scale, I'll start kind of freehanding it a bit more, letting it get a bit more natural looking. But at least for the start, we're gonna keep it like this. Can I? There we go, okay, that is nicer. We're gonna do this, and then zoom here. We're gonna do this, and then let's raise this up a little bit as well. Boop. And then we'll grab this. And then, okay, that should work for now. I guess I will also actually do, let's see, I'm gonna raise this up a little bit and we're gonna raise this up a little bit. You can see that uh, on the cursor status over here on the right. Oh. <coughs> oh, uh, bless me. Uh, the cursor status over here on the right, we are in the lowland. And you can see when I move into the water, we're in the shallows and it'll also give us our exact height. We're at one here and then zero here. Um, I'm gonna keep, okay, we'll keep this like this. And then the last thing I want, is this gonna fit? Oh, it is going to fit, I guess. Um, hmm, should I rise, raise all of this? No, we're just gonna put this here and here. Okay, now, so you can see our, our temperature has gone down to 41 degrees which is a bit chilly, I think, for this early in the game, but that's okay. We're just, like I said, we're just gonna let it happen. But it is going to go down a little bit because we are going to put in right here 
a river source. And you can see that instantly made it green around. And then we're going to go down. And you can see as we go down here, it'll take the river with us. And we're going to slowly increase in temperature here. Um, now for this area, we're going to do a little something special. I'm going to do... Uh, let's do this and this. Oh, hold on. That is a little silly, but yeah, there we go. And that'll just make a waterfall that goes off into the void. Uh, nothing wrong with that. And then we're going to do this. And if I move around here, you can see that made a big waterfall here, which we are then going to... Uh, let's get a little bit more specific with this. Let me line myself up. Here we go. Um, okay, now we're gonna do this. And we're gonna let this just be a big old waterfall that is gonna pour into the ocean. All rivers lead to the ocean and all that. We're gonna do this. There we go. Okay, that looks nice. And then we're gonna go, let's see, let's get this. We're gonna go down here and we're going to make ourselves a little river that goes over this way and let's go a little farther okay now let's grab not you but you and we're going to make a nice lower land lake here i'm going to go down here and then let's get a bit of a smaller one down here Nice big old lake at the base here. Good amount of fresh water is great for a developing world. And then we're gonna do this. Let me do this. And then let me actually, hold on, let's do this. Thankfully we have a ton of HP, like I said, that is making this process way, way easier. I would be having to cut a lot of me just doing it one block by one block, which is, you know, nobody wants to see that or you know cut it all out and everything okay there we go so this side is looking good now let's go over here we're gonna do a little bit extra on this side you can see that temperature is rising we're already back up to 46 degrees so the our end temperature isn't gonna be all that different this one we're gonna make a nice thin river um, we're gonna take it down to about here and then we're gonna drag it over this way all rivers lead to the ocean there we go okay so that's all the fresh water we're gonna worry about for now but let's go up here and let's see what happens we are gonna drop in temperature a bit so that might be tough for some of our organisms but should also give us boom instantly got something new what is this i believe this is a new plant is it a land plant oh it is Excellent. So we got a plant way up here. I believe this evolves from the Colunia, that seaweed. We got it right up here on our highland mountains. You can also see that all that green went away. I think that's because we technically haven't evolved grass yet. So it needed a little second to catch up. But okay, that's starting to do well. You can see the dirt is starting to expand on land as the plants sort of move up there and break up the ground. We also are getting some green actually spawning in. We have Pachynorthis. If I remember correctly, I think this is a freshwater clam? Yes, there he is. Okay, we have our first freshwater organism up in this highland lake. Pachynorthis. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now let's zoom around here. I'll zoom back out. Um, we can give a quick check up to how our ocean creatures are doing. What's everybody's population like? Pikea is still huge. Dinorthus doing great. Uh, Cyclomedusa not great. They're kind of on the edge. A lot of the a lot of the uh, Pikea, they are really doing great. Arathia, oh they're doing awesome. Um, okay, seems like everything's propagating pretty well. We have a lot of Colunia up in this area. We're starting to get a decent amount of land plants. Really starting to shape that land. Beautiful. Let's hope Pachynorthus stays around i remember that one being one that is prone to extinction but we'll see Ooh, we'll see they're kind of their numbers are Ooh. oh okay we had something you can see it's called astraspis and it has 
come into world and before I could even see what it was, it has immediately gone extinct. That's what this symbol means. I guess these are self-explanatory, but like every so often, it'll say if an organism is increasing in numbers, staying the same or decreasing. Um, our air temp is still decreasing a bit. Don't know exactly why this thing didn't last, but you never really know. Sometimes they just don't have the right conditions. Maybe they spawned in and then were hunted to extinction, something like that. Oh, Astraspis is back. We'll see if they last this time. Let's see if we can find them. I assume they are something in the water still. I don't believe we have any land organisms. Uh, let's see. Let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, there he is. Astraspis. Okay, that actually looks like a proto fish, if I'm not mistaken. Very cool, very cool. Um, okay. Let's zoom back out. Let's hope they survive, because that would be kind of sick. We also have Skya de Phyton. Where is that? We have a new kind of plant. Oh, is that? Let's see. I bet that's this. Oh. Oh, no. That's, I think that's just like generic grass. Doesn't seem like it's an actual organism. Um, so this is all the Baraguatha. Oh, this stuff. Yes, Asterozylon. So this must just be the dry ground version of that other stuff. Awesome. Well, let's keep it moving. See what happens. The Straspis seems like it's actually going to hold on this time. So that's great. Yes. Okay. They are increasing in numbers. Oh, we have ooh, three new things. Ophiroid, pro prototaxites. And Sakabam Baspis. All right, bro. Whatever, whatever you say. Uh, so it looks like it was a mollusk, and it looked like a tree of some kind. Is that this? No, that's also just generic grass. Oh, here we go. Okay, so it's this thing. These are actually fungus spires that were real on Earth. Um, they were kind of like the first trees in a way. But very cool. Okay, that's cool. They're spawning way up in our highlands. That probably means they need lower temperature. You can see cursor status. We are in the upland, and also the degrees up here are 35. Um, you can also see the uh, like moisture level. But the degree is 35. If we go down to our lowland, then it's 44 or 45, much more like the actual air temperature. And then in the shallows, it immediately drops a little bit. Uh, just because it's in the water. But, okay, so there's that. Now, what else did we get? Let's zoom in a little bit. See if we can see a new creature in here somewhere. Oh, I think this is new. Our first actual sea star, the Ophiroid. There, there it is right there. See the little blue sea star down there. And then I don't remember what the other thing was. But is it this? No, that's just an Elrathia. Okay. Um, what was the other thing? It was Sacabambaspis. What on earth is that? Um, seems to be... Um, oh, is it you? It is. Okay, another new type of proto-fish. Very cool, very cool. All right, let's keep it going. See if all of them survive, first of all. But Okay, looks like they're doing well. Oh, and Dreolepsis. That's an actual fish awesome uh and it seems like another type of tree is this an actual tree oh it is we have our first actual tree very cool it's like a palm tree also in the highlands it does potentially signify we need more or lower temperatures overall but the mushroom the fungus spires are getting into the lowlands now so our land is looking pretty good these days um, but let's see, what was the other thing we got? Oh, right, the fish. I think this is our first actual fish. Where is he? Hold on, we'll find him. We'll find him. I guess if we have our first actual fish, this could be a good place to leave off. Where are you, buddy? I know you're in here somewhere. I guess you guys might see him before I do. Where are you? Uh, don't see any fish in here. They don't have a very big population, so there's probably only like one of them at this point. Mm -hmm. We can also kind of see on the map which of the red dots are moving like faster than the other ones. Could be a good way to good way to find them. 
Oh, there they are. Tiny little school of fish. Awesome. So yeah, these are our first actual, our first actual fish. Very cool. Um, all right. Well, let me see how long we've been going for. Solid thirty minutes. I think that is, I think that's good. We are. We have started our own world with evolving creatures left and right. Next time, I think. I think next time we'll probably be able to make this step onto land with our actual animals. Uh, but we'll also see if we can get a bit more land diversity and stuff, make the sea a bit deeper, see if we can evolve some more sea creatures, all that kind of stuff. But that'll be for next time. I hope y'all enjoyed. This is a great game. It is. It can be a little frustrating with the controls and like just the way it works. But it is really fun to play, so... I'm excited to have a new series on it, and I hope you guys are too. But without further ado, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, jankers.